Hello again, Josh Carr, Carr Real Estate. So today I wanted to share with you something interesting. It's a question that came up in my work, and I always like sharing things that come up in my work because, you know, it's good to share. So let's say hypothetically you had a structure like what you see here. Uh, you've got two entities. There's a sponsor, that's New York City Properties. There's an investor, that's Black Capital. And they've decided to put in money in the following way, a 90-10 break, 10% from the sponsor, 90 from the investor. Everyone's going to get a 12% rate of return on their money, and then there's a promote and some split of the remaining money above the promote. This is a pretty typical structure. There's a pref, there's a split. It's like many other equity structures. But here's the question and what caused a little consternation with some of my colleagues. Um, how do you handle this clause if contributions and distributions are made on different days of the month? You see, most of these agreements say something like, uh, I'm going to put in money, you're going to put in money, uh, and if the money happens in the month of March or in the second quarter, uh, we're going to compound it as such. In other words, we're not going to worry about whether or not you got the money in April, May, or June. We'll just say, what quarter was it in? We're not going to worry about was the money on the fifth of the month. We're just going to say, oh, it was in the month of March. But what if you actually had a model that said, we need to keep track of everything and compound everything on a daily basis. Well, how would you do it? Well, here goes. So, money from one party and the other, a rate of return. The first thing to do would be to say, we've got some dates, we've got some values. If I take these dates and these values and I do an XIRR calculation, it says, oh, you made 21% on your money. Remember, if you don't know this, an XIR compounds everything on a 365-day schedule, which, you know, is a good thing. Uh, it does not understand leap years, so realize everything's on a 365-day schedule. Now, let's say we need to take this PREF of 12 and turn it into a daily rate. Four ways to do this. We could take it to the 1 365th power. That is to say, we could treat each year as if it had 365 days. Just put it right there. We could treat it as if it had 360 days. We could maybe take into account leap years of 0.25. We could really do something crazy and say, well, we're going to use a different number of days based on what year the cash flow takes place in. I'm going to do 365, but to be honest, whether or not you do 360, or 365.25, or 365, as you can see, the amounts are pretty trivial. Um, I would not use 360 unless the operating agreement specified it. I'd probably use 365 if the operating agreement were silent. Um, I would not use the third or fourth option unless I really wanted to hit myself in the face with a frying pan. Uh, that is probably overly specific or overly complex and not what you want to do with your free time. So, same cash flows of above. The magic here, if you will, is that money goes in. We've got the end of period balance and the beginning of period balance. And really the secret here is, instead of having thousands of columns for the thousands of possible days, you only take into account the day that something happens in. This day, May 30th, 2022, is 349 days from June 15th, 2021. If you want to double check it, you can take this number and subtract this number and convert it into a format that isn't a date, and there it is, 349. The secret to making this work, to the extent there's a secret, is the principal part, you know, that's just principal, that's simple enough. The interesting part is the interest. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, and actually I shouldn't have called this principal, I should have called this uh, payment, pardon me. The interest is going to be this. It's going to say, take the amount of money you started with, say a million dollars, multiply it by one plus that rate, which is this teeny little rate, to the power of 512 minus the initial amount. or Simply put, 
uh, compound that daily rate for that number of days. If you start with a million and you owe 172 in interest, or if it makes you feel better, you could call it a preferred return, and you pay 100, now you only owe 1,072,000 million because a million plus 172 minus 100 is a 1,072,000. Million this then continues throughout the model. Eventually, you have enough money coming in that it exceeds what you owe. If you have a million five coming in, you effectively pay a million sixty four and the other four thirty five is overflow. And here, I just have like the world's dumbest if statement to say, once we've gotten beyond a place where we've paid off the pref, stop calculating. To confirm that this cash flow gets you to a 12, I did an XIR calculation. Dates, values, you get the idea. And yes, indeed, this flow of money gets you to a 12. Now, if you do this, it may not get you exactly to a 12. Realize that when you start compounding things and then you add them up and you get the idea, you might end up pretty darn close to a 12, but not perfect. Excel goes to, I believe it's 15 spaces after the decimal. It's not perfect, but again, you know, for most people who are not mental, uh, that's close enough. In any event, money in, money out, split on a 90-10 basis. There's an overflow of 435 because we paid 1.5 and we had a million in payments, so that's 435. Then there's a promote, which is 20% of that amount. The remaining 80% is then split 90-10. And when we pull it together, the sponsor puts in money and gets out money to a 12, gets their promote, gets their 10% share of the 80% after the promote. The investor gets their pref, gets their 90% share of the 80% after the promote. And in this case, the deal makes 22%, the investor makes 20, the sponsor makes 35. I also threw in an error check to make sure that if I take all the money I gave everyone, that equals the amount of money I started with. I'm really big about double checks. I'm big about making sure that when I thought I got to a 12, I did. And I'm really good about when I see all the money everyone got, did it equal what I started with? In any event, <clears throat> this all came up because someone said to me, well, how do we do daily calculations? And again, the secret to the extent there's a secret is don't have one column per day, have one column per cash flow. Um, and well, that's the basic idea. You know, and I think this, uh, this makes sense. Uh, this is your basic structure. Uh, there's some other things we can do with daily calculations, but... For now, I just wanted to sort of do a basic one. Um, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy, feel free to send me ideas for videos, concepts, what have you, to josh at kahrrealestate.com. Uh, you can also go to my website, www.kahrrealestate.com, or, you know, I guess, I don't know, send me an email, fly a carrier pigeon to my house. I have no idea how you're going to reach me, but email is probably best. Um, Nonetheless, until I see you again, keep building better models and um, hope you found this to be helpful. Thanks again.